Hi everybody, Dr. L here, uh, and in today's segment of Micro Theory, we're going to talk about the dual specifications of a technology, uh, and we're going to do this by going through an example where we recover a production function, uh, actually starting out with the cost function. So this is a little bit backwards from the normal process where we start with a production function and then derive the cost function through the cost minimization exercise. So here's our environment. Uh, we're producing one output using two inputs. We face constant input prices for each input, and when we go ahead and minimize our expenditure on these inputs subject to the technology constraint, we're able to generate our input demands. And when we substitute these input demands back in the objective function, which was the minimized expenditure, this was the way we were able to recover the total cost function as a function of output and input prices. Um, so what we're going to do next, now that we spent some time seeing how a particular technology uh, it, you know, implies a particular cost function, um, we should be slightly familiar with this process. So uh, the process that we just went through was we started with the production function, uh, then we were able to generate the input demands via this process of cost minimization, uh, and last but not least, we plug the input demands into the optimized expenditure function to get our cost function. Um, now, the idea behind duality and dual representations of technologies is that there are actually uh, multiple problems that characterize the same solution to the cost minimization exercise. So, uh, one can easily imagine going through this process uh, completely in reverse. That is, um, you may remember this from consumer theory, but there's a dual problem to expenditure minimization that actually might yield an identical solution, and we can actually exploit this to our advantage computationally. Um, so the existence of this dual problem essentially implies that we could run this same process uh, in reverse. That is, we could actually start with the cost function, uh, then we could use the cost function to derive the input demands, and the process we're going to use to do this uh, is an idea known as Shepard's Lemma, and I'll introduce that in a minute. And once we get the input demands, we'll be able to back out the production function using the tangency condition, the first order conditions of optimization for the firm. Um, so this is the idea. We can go forward from the production function to the cost function through cost minimization, or we can go backwards from the cost function to the production function uh, using Shepard's Lemma. Okay, so there's this two-way street between the production function and the cost function, so I just want to be very clear that I could give you F and you could tell me what C is, or vice versa. I don't actually need to specify them both together because one actually implies the other given this optimizing behavior of the firm. So these are the two different ways to actually specify the same technology. I could tell you the output function F or I could give you the optimized cost function. In most practical situations, the production function itself is often not known. Uh, after all, it's a very highly abstract concept, sort of this black box where we convert inputs into outputs. Uh, and in these situations, it may be easier for the practitioner to actually directly specify the cost function as opposed to specifying the production function, uh, knowing that the cost function that you specify does correspond in theory to some production function that you maybe don't necessarily know. Um, you may run into the situation, uh, you know, as a practitioner, if uh, maybe you have data on cost and input prices and you don't have data on uh, inputs like capital and labor, and you can actually use the data on cost and input prices to build a statistical model or maybe some sort of regression model uh, if you've taken a course on a regression analysis or econometrics. Um, and in that situation, having access to cost and price data and quantity data uh, may make it easier to directly specify the cost function than trying to get data on capital, which could be awkwardly defined in certain cases, and labor in trying to actually uh, maybe estimate the production function directly. So here's an example uh, where we've directly specified the cost function. So here the cost is a function, again, of my input prices and output, and Z, A, and B, these are all constant parameters of the model here. Okay, and I want you to think of this as the cost function that you would have obtained if you had gone through the cost minimization exercise with some production function, some corresponding production function, uh, which we don't know what the production function is, but our objective is going to be to use the information built into this cost function to recover the production function or to recover the technology. Okay, uh, so we're going to employ this idea known as Shepard's Lemma, and this lemma is the first step really in recovering the technology. Recall this is how we're going to go from the uh, cost function to input demands. Um, and again, this links the cost function to input demands in a manner similar to the way that the consumer's expenditure function in your consumer theory course uh, was linked to the Hicksian demand. Okay, in fact, you may remember the name Shepard's Lemma because it was also employed uh, in the context of consumer theory in a very similar regard related to expenditure minimization. Um, 
the crux of the lemma is that it essentially states that the solution to the cost minimization problem will be unique, meaning there'll be only one bundle that satisfies this problem, provided that the technology sets are strictly convex. Okay, and there's an interesting computational implication uh, that we'll get to in a minute, but let me just explain this strictly convex term because we talked about convexity before. All right, so let's just take, take a brief hiatus here. So we'll call that a set is convex. If you can pick any two points in the set, connect them with a straight line, and have the entire line lie within the set. So notice these two middle sets here, okay, this, um, this set and this circle here, uh, these are both convex sets. I can draw a line uh, picking any two points in either of these sets. I can connect them and the line itself, the segment connecting those two points will fall somewhere within the region or on the boundary. Uh, this set on the far left is not a convex set because when I connect, when I pick two points and draw a line, uh, there are some cases where the two points that I choose will give me a line that falls outside of that region. Okay, um, so there's a stricter definition of convexity known, as I said very creatively here, as strict convexity. And this defines a set as being strictly convex if the line segment joining any two points from the set lies strictly within the interior of the set and not on the edges or on the boundary of the set. So notice in this middle case here, if I pick two points on the boundary and connect them, the red line itself falls on the boundary, meaning the set is not a strictly convex set. However, the circle is a strictly convex set because any two points I pick on the boundary when I connect the line, the line segment not including these two points on the edge, falls strictly within the interior of this gray region. Okay, so now that we understand what strict convexity is, let's talk about how this is related to the uniqueness of, of the uh, cost minimizing solution. So when the technology sets are not strictly convex, uh, for example, in this left-hand diagram here, there's a flat portion of this isoquant right there. It kind of gets flat. Um, so that's not a strictly convex set anymore, this region T, which keeps going really up farther and to the right. Um, this right-hand diagram, though, the set T here is definitely uh, is strictly convex. Uh, so you'll notice if we're in the situation where we have a weakly convex technology set uh, and the flat portion happens to be tangent to this blue ISO cost curve, then any of these allocations between points A and B are going to wind up being optimal uh, in terms of solving this cost minimization problem. So I'm not going to wind up getting a unique solution like I would over in this right-hand diagram where there is just a single unique point of tangency at this point C. Okay, so a couple implications of the lemma. Okay, first and foremost, I can take the partial derivative of the cost function with respect to the input prices, and this is going to be the link that allows me to recover these input demands. Okay, so this is really that first step, okay, and the interesting computational implication of Shepard's lemma based on the uniqueness of the solution. All right, so once we get the input demands, um, and then I'll show you how we can actually recover the technology, but let's just revisit this example. So here is our cost function before. I'm going to take the derivatives with respect to R and W to recover uh, the input demands L and K. So here is my uh, partial derivative of the cost function with respect to uh, W. And I'm going to just simplify this a little bit so that we can actually get the price ratio um, isolated by itself here. So it's a little obvious later on when we need it. Uh, then I can go ahead and I can take the partial derivative with respect to R and I can get the capital input requirement. Uh, I'm sorry, the capital input demand. And again, with a little bit of algebra, I can again isolate this price ratio. Okay, now we're going to go through how to recover the production function. So I've recovered now each of the input demands using Shepard's lemma by taking that partial derivative. Okay, and what I'm going to do next to recover the production function is I'm going to solve for these price ratios within each of the input demand bundles. Because remember what the price ratios are equal to, right? At that point of tangency, the price ratios are each equal to the uh, rate of technical substitution. So that these terms in the blue and in the green, uh, those are both expressions for the RTS. Okay, so what we're going to wind up doing next is we're going to recover the production function by essentially setting the terms in blue and green equal to one another and solving for Q as a function of my inputs L and K. Okay, so um, there's some algebra to get through here. I'm gonna go very, very quickly step by step. In fact, I'm gonna just jump here uh, to the end because I'm running out of time to shoot this particular video. 
um, and I will pick up with a second video segment where I recover the full production technology.